Hi everyone, Lisa Shaw here, and today I am going to talk to you about creating multiple position hoop layouts in the Enthusiast software. You are able to create multiple position hoop layouts for either um, large layout designs where you rehoop the fabric, or for multi-position hoops such as this jerky, easy, uh, sturdy frame, which is for the single needle um, um, tubular embroidery machine. And that you can do that in either Stitch Artist or Enthusiast. However, in Stitch Artist, if you don't have Enthusiast, so you only have Stitch Artist, you can create a multi-position hoop layout, but you can't split stitch files. You can digitize for it, digitize hoop number one, hoop number two, or for whatever your layout is, but the splitting of the stitch files is an Enthusiast function. So that's what we're going to focus on is creating this multiple position hoop layout for splitting stitch files in Enthusiast. It's done the exact same way, no matter the program, but most people want to split a design that someone else has already digitized and stitch it out in their hoop. Now let's talk about this hoop a little bit. It attaches, this is for a, um, a multi-needle or tubular embroidery machine so that it has the two clamps on the sides. The maximum embroidery area, stitchable area, for this particular design, the machine is eight inches square. That's this, this particular design. This hoop allows you to hoop fabric that is eight inches by 14 inches and stitch one design, but it has to be split into two sections. That's why we call it a multi-position hoop. You stitch section number one, flip the hoop upside down and stitch section number two. When you're done, you have one big design, but it had to be broken up into more than one piece. So I'm going to, we're going to pop in the software and talk a little bit about the dialogue that you use to um, create this layout. Before I get there, the dimensions for and instructions for creating this layout in whatever software is are provided by the manufacturer. So Durkee has includes with it some instructions for this. It gives you the recommended hoop size um, that you're going to use for stitching each one and the maximum stitching area. If your hoop did not come with instructions, um, who knows when you're watching this, but if it didn't come with instructions, you're going to want to just verify because you're the, even though if you measure this hoop, Okay, it's bigger than eight inches wide, but your foot of your embroidery machine needs clearance and it needs clearance at the top and at the sides. So you need to take that into consideration. Also, this is for the eight inch embroidery machine. If you load an eight inch or 200 millimeter, we have to work in metric here because hoops are metric. So this hoop is actually for the 200 millimeter square embroidery machine. If you load a design that is 200 millimeters square to your machine, you can't move it at all. So you had better be exactly, perfectly, 100% accurate in hooping, loading, and whatnot at your machine because you can do no onboard editing. Since that's usually not the case, you they recommend that you make your design area just a little bit smaller so that you have some adjustment capability at the machine, which is very important, especially when you're breaking up a design. If you take a large design and break it into two pieces, that's just like taking a cookie and breaking it in half. You want to make sure that you, when you put those two pieces together, knowing and tell that they've been broken. The only way to do that is to ensure that the second section is exactly lined up with the first section. So making your design area just a hair smaller gives you the capability of making some manipulations at the machine to make sure those two sections line up. So... Let's pop on into the software and we will see, um, we'll create our hoop layout. Let me put my hoop down. This is done by going to preferences. Soon as you go to preferences, you are given the hoop layout screen. The normal hoop, and I say normal, but I should, it should probably say single position hoop. Those are all listed here. When you have hoop style, that's what normal means. One position. Catch a hoop, there it goes. If you notice, I also, I already have 
hoops that I've added, my Derky Easy frames. I've taken them in measurements. I clicked on the new button, typed in the name for my hoop, put the metric measurements in for the area, clicked OK, and they show up in my hoop list. Easy. We're doing it the same way, except we're going to go to multi position, click on new, and this has a little bit more information because it's not just a single position hoop. It's a multi position hoop, and you need to know the size, not only the size of the embroidery area, but also how those two sections overlap and work together to create a large overall design. All that information is provided to you with the hoop when you got it. So you just need to make sure you have it. Yes, I already have the hoops created, but we're going to create a brand new one here, step by step. Hoop name. Let's give it a name here, and I'm going to call it the PRS, whoopsie, PRS 100. I'm going to call it the uh, 8 by 14, because it's 8 inches by 14. So it's like a familiar name and I'm going to call it flip hoop just because I need to, to know that in, in me that I'm going to be flipping this hoop upside down. So you stitch one half, flip the hoop, stitch the other half. It's just a name that I get. It's familiar for me. You can call it whatever you want. File type. That's the next thing we need to worry about. The PES format. That's what we're working in. Now where it says overall size here, there's, this is not a field that you type information in. This is a confirmation screen so that you can look at the information that you're giving the software and confirming it's creating what it is that you need. Okay. So I already know that this needs to say 190 by 370 because that's what my instructions tell me. It doesn't say that yet because I need to give some information. The maximum stitching area, the maximum design size, a single design is 190 millimeters square. You need to know metric because that's how embroidery is. It is not inches. It's not an eight inch hoop and it's not a seven and a half inches. It's exactly 190 by 190 millimeters. The, and if you noticed here, this overall size has changed. So it's just giving, like I said, it's giving you a confirmation. The number of rows, think about that hoop. It's gonna have, it has two rows. One, two. So we need to change that three to a two. The offset, you need to do a little bit of math here. The offset is the overall size, which is 370, minus the hoop size, which is 190, and that gives us 180. I'm going to click off of that just to, it be, or you can hit the enter key to register that number that you just put in there. And look at that. Our overall size here now says 190 by 370. These options, um, color by color and right to left, talk about how the design will be split out. If you do color by color wings, that it would stitch all of color one in the top hoop, all of color number one in the bottom hoop, and you'd have to be keep flipping your hoop upside down and keep loading your files. This machine wasn't set up to really do that. You're set up to do one entire design and a second entire design. So that's the way we want it to don be done. Right to left really means um, uh, would be more useful if you're doing rehooping of fabric. It doesn't really apply to this because we're doing top to bottom. Now, the one option here that we need to pay attention to is as I keep, as I mentioned a few times, this is a flip hoop. You stitch design number one, flip the hoop upside down, and it will stitch design number two. If you don't rotate the design, the software will rotate the design for you if you choose this option because you're flipping your hoop. So for this particular hoop, choosing that option's a good idea. Um, the preserve center offset has to do with a different type of hoop. It, it's not this in this portion, not this type of setup. We don't need to worry about it. Leave it checked. The add basting alignment lines, I'm all for double checking things. It, the worst thing happens is if you were to stitch all of hoop number one, load the design, stitch all of hoop number two, and you end up with a gap. Uh, easy double check that the software does for you, if you choose this option, that's what this check mark is for, is that it will add an alignment line at the bottom of the last thing to stitch at, at hoop number one. 
When you flip your hoop, the first thing that will stitch is an alignment line in the exact same location that the other alignment line is expected to be. Remember I mentioned wiggle room? <laughs> so if you stitched out a very dense design in hoop number one, you flipped your hoop over and you, you went to the first color of the second file and you stitched it out and those two lines were right on top of each other, it's mathematically impossible for the sections to not be together. They are going to be perfect. But if you load design number two and you notice that there's a slight gap in between that stitched alignment line, stop right there. Load the design again and nudge it a little bit closer. Check with your needle, do the laser work, however it is that you can do a, a, these enhancements at your machine. If your machine has that capability, make sure those two lines stitch. Doesn't They will be lined up in the software. You just need to make sure they're lined up at the machine. They're attached to the files. As that's a, easy to fix. If the lines don't line up and you stop right there, that's only one line of stitching you have to take out. So I recommend you keep that there. Uh, the length of the basting stitch, if your machine's pulling them out, you can make this longer, shorter, whatever it is that you want. Leave it. I usually say leave it at the default and see if you need to adjust it for the next time. Double check all your information here, especially the overall size. Click save and you will notice that at the bottom of your multi-position hoop list here, that is that hoop. Okay, so when you click on it, you click apply, click OK. Now when you zoom out, there is your multi-position hoop layout where you can open your design. The next time you open your hoops and you go to multi-position hoop, that file will be reorganized into your font list that's listed here. Usually they're right at the top are the ones that you've added. They're either at the right at the top or the ones right at the bottom. So just notice that it is did reorganize it so that all the ones that I personally have added are here. If you decide you ever want to delete that hoop, because I do have two of them in here, I might as well delete one of them, select it, hit the delete key, and it will remove it. Need to add a new hoop? Click on the new key. It's easy enough to create and adjust the hoops that you have by using that dialog box in the Enthusiast software. Hopefully you found that interesting. Enjoy and have fun using your software.